Well, good day and welcome back to the shed for part two of this Fisk Radiola console radio. And at the end of part one, I had got the radio working, although um, it still needs a recap and a lot of work. But uh, towards the end of it, it just stopped working and a wisp of smoke came out of the speaker. I guess the first thing to do is um, check the transformer, the speaker transformer, the speaker itself, and see if I can work out what's happened. I'm not too sure what went wrong, but I don't have a good feeling about this. Well, the smoke came out around here somewhere. Um, I had just turned the chassis around, and that might have stretched the speaker cable a bit. Maybe it's caused something to short. I don't know. Um, first things first, I'll just see what we've got here. Take the speaker plug off. Get my meter out. And we'll see what we've got. Okay, so remember the field coil was on these two. And we've got 1568 ohms on that. So we've still got a field coil. That's, that's something. I'll check it to the speaker frame. If I can find a bit of metal somewhere. And nothing there. Okay, so the next thing to do is to check the output transformer. And, yeah, we've got 383 ohms on the, um, on the primary of the output transformer. Of course, I don't know what's happened to the secondary. I'd have to have a look across the, uh, the wiring there, uh, see what we've got on the voice coil. That's a bit of a relief that we've got that, but it still doesn't explain the smoke and lack of, uh, lack of sound. What I might do is give this a clean up first and then we'll see. I have a good look over the speaker. I'll also check this plug to see if something might have shorted in here. I don't know. Bending the wires around is probably not a good idea. It might have developed a short in there somewhere. Okay, let's have a look at it. I don't know if there's any way that this rear can comes off. Oh, I've missed some cobwebs around there. Never mind. I'll just um, fish them out for the moment. I'll clean it up properly later. I don't know if this just comes off. I'll give it a gentle try. Of course, I'm assuming the problem was the speaker. I don't know for sure. Oh, look, that just lifts off. Is there another hole on the other side? No. It does seem to just lift off though, so I'll keep trying here. Okay. Not much to be seen there. I'm hoping the voice coil is not cooked. Um, if it is, we might get some scraping. And we're getting some scraping. I don't like the sound of that. Alright, let's check across the voice coil. I think I can get at these terminals here. We're getting a reading. It's varying all over the place. 3, 2, 3.1 ohms. So it looks like the voice coil might be alive or the secondary. So we might be alright there. Just clean this out. I'll turn it over and we'll work out where this wiring goes. I can't see any signs of burning or anything here. But these wires go through the frame here and into the back of the transformer here. I might just have to have a look at those. So I've got this attached to this ground lug. I'll just see if anything here is shorted to ground. Now that central pin there might be ground. Yeah, I think that is the ground pin. I guess I could take this plug off and see if uh, anything's shorted in there. what's on the back of this and 
if any of these have touched ground perhaps that one looks a bit frayed that's the one of the field coil wires and these wires I can feel them they go up around here and into the output transformer so there's a little bit of slack here the only restriction is this earth wire here um, which goes to this tag I'll take this off I guess it has a nut on the inside Ah, I knew it anyway I'll take this out okay and the back of the plug apart from a bit of fraying on this wire looks all right looking at these coil connections it does look like there's a that's probably a humbucker coil down the bottom there um, used to ha cancel out hum from the uh, from the power supply all right I guess I'll take the, the output transformer off and have a look underneath that and see if I can see any cause for smoke and shorts I'm not seeing anything yet so it looks as if this tag strip is attached and the transformer is not going to come out of its housing easily anyway but I'm not seeing any cause for shorts so I'll see if I can take out this frayed wire and put a bit of heat shrink on it Okay, well I've managed to get it all back together and it's all checking out okay. Um, one encouraging sign is I'm hearing a faint click through the speaker when I put my meter lead on it. Only faint, but of course the field coil isn't energised. Whether it's breaking down under load, I don't know. I can't see anything burnt in there or anything where smoke might have come out. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Alright, so... Uh, as far as I can tell the speaker's okay so let's uh, now have a look at other possible causes for it okay so I've turned the chassis upside down and I'm just looking at where the speaker coils come back in and this this um, electrolytic does look a little bit as if it might have been leaking so that's I doubt if that's a cause but it could have uh, shorted the ground why the speaker would have smoked I don't know maybe something got hot there I think I might just change that anyway I can't see any physical shorts or anything here at all so yeah I guess I'll um, I'll change that electrolytic and see then put it on dim bulb and just see what happens looking at that electrolytic it does look rather dodgy it looks as if it's been leaking I'm hoping that that's the cause of the problem well I've tacked in a new electrolytic just here um, I took the old one out and measured it and it measured 10 microfarads um, it was supposed to be an 8 um, but it didn't look to be shorted or anything so I'm not at all confident that this is going to solve our problem but uh, what I've decided to do after having a close look around everything is to um, power it up on dim bulb without the speaker plugged in and see what happens I might be turning this off very quickly so here goes pretty bright dimming off no that doesn't look too bad looking for anything smoking in here anything that doesn't look right nothing nothing happening yet that dim bulb's dimmed right off of course not much will happen because the speaker isn't plugged in 
Okay, um, so I don't have a major issue in the chassis here. I've checked the speaker out as well as best I can. So I think what I might do now is just plug the speaker back in and uh, again apply power via dim bulb and just see if uh, we have a problem or not. Okay, that's off. Plugging the speaker in again. Um, so that goes in like that. Make sure nothing's touching there. All right, so um, here goes nothing. And the dim bulb's behaving. No smoke. Hmm, that's lit up and we're not hearing any sound, but then we didn't before on dim bulb, but uh, too restricted and uh, is not enough to um, to make the RF section work. I'll see if we've got any... Okay, well that's promising I guess. Hmm, do I dare try it on um, full power? I don't think so, not just yet. I'll find a bigger light globe, I'll see if I've got a 100 watt one or something there and uh, try that in it. Okay, I've got another globe in now. I'm not quite sure what wattage this one is because the numbers have rubbed off it but uh, I think it's more than the one I had, so we'll see what happens. Still no reception though. Nothing happening there. Hmm, that's not going to get me anywhere. Okay, so I've plugged the variac in. I'm going to go off dim bulb and apply some power to it and just see if anything happens. About 180, going up to 200 volts. I'm not hearing anything, but I'm not seeing any smoke either. Uh, hang on, yes. Well, no smoke coming out. It seems to be picking up some pretty bad interference there. And that tuning capacitor is not good. Um, I need to clean that out. I don't know why I'm not getting actual reception where I was before. But I think I need to clean that uh, tuning cap out before I try much more for that. I'll bring the voltage up to 220. See if we get anything there. Well, either we don't have an oscillator or there's just not enough power being applied, applied to it. But I'm going to turn it off because we seem to have solved whatever the short problem was. Just feel that field coil. That doesn't feel hot. Um, just looking for anything else in here that's without touching anything too much. It might be hot. Not really. I think I'll go ahead and change some capacitors and uh, see where we go from there and I'll clean out that tuning condenser. I've cleaned most of the dust off 
um, practically all of it and I've given the tuning capacitor a good clean out. I still haven't changed any paper capacitors or anything. I'm going to give it a try on dim bulb. Just make sure we don't have any shorts or anything first and then see if we might get any reception. I could be wrong about this globe too. It could be a lower, vo lower wattage than the one I had in before. Um, I'm not getting as much hum as I was before with it on dim bulb. In any case, it doesn't appear to have any major shorts in it. So what I'm going to do is dial this right back down, go off dim bulb, and slowly bring it up. does sound like we're getting something there. Just trying to pick something up. We're still not... Oh, hang on. Okay, that's reception. It's weak, but we're only on just under 200 volts, about 190. So I'll just bring that up a little bit. Demonstrated a strong public backlash to the Supreme Court. OK, well, we're getting reception now, so that's a relief. Uh, we're on about 215 volts there, I suppose. So, all seems to be well, um, but I'm not going to push my luck any further. So, what I'm going to do now, I think, is um, turn it over and work through those paper capacitors, change them all out, and uh, see how we go from there. But at least we don't seem to have any smoke, we don't seem to have any shorts. So whatever it was, um, it was either an issue with the wiring on the speaker or that uh, electrolytic. One or the other, I'll never know which, but uh, it doesn't really matter because it's working again. Well I must say it's more pleasant to work on now all that dust is gone. It wasn't in too bad a condition underneath the, uh, the dust. And so the recap begins. I've even put a, a new tip in my soldering iron just for the occasion. So the valves are out, got her upside down, let's get started. And I'll start with the point ones, um, get them out of the way. Last one. Well, there it is finished. Uh, perhaps there weren't that many in the end, after all. I still have to uh, check some resistors and uh, do the electrolytic caps. So I'll get onto the electrolytics first. I'll check the resistors as I go. I was just changing the mains power cord, and I thought I'd also check the cord that runs the uh, 240 volt light for the dial lamps. It's just a 15 watt incandescent globe and it's in truly frightening condition. Look at that. It looked fine from the outside. I didn't see anything wrong with it. It was just like that. And the other end of the cord looked good. Gee, I'm glad I didn't move that while I was working on it. Anyway, I'll uh, try and reuse the outside uh, fabric cover for this and run some new wires. 
This 24 mic capacitor was probably perfectly alright. It tested at about 26 microfarads and I'm sure it's a replacement, it won't be original, it's covered in plastic. And I was tossing up whether I should replace it or not. Um, it seems pointless to replace it if, uh, if it's perfectly alright. But in the end I wasn't sure so I decided to, uh, to stuff it anyway. So I've removed the guts of it and I've taken the base plate out and I've put a, one of Carl's 24 mic capacitors mounted on that just brought the wire through there and that will now fit back in so I'll go ahead with that I don't know if I've wasted my time but uh, I suppose better to be sure now the next conundrum do I remove the plastic covering from this and leave the metal can? I think it would probably look better. This isn't an original capacitor and plastic looks wrong on these chassis I guess. I don't know. Yeah look I'm going to remove the plastic. Um, got the serious iron out for this one. Not as serious as some, but it does the job. This second electrolytic, the uh, 10 UF one, was originally an 8, but I'm replacing it with a 10. Uh, it uh, doesn't go to ground so I can't attach the negative to the can so what I've done is I've just mounted it on this plate with some araldite and it's going to slip into this uh, can I've got here from an old radio uh, that'll fit in there I've got a little bit of packing in the bottom so it doesn't flop around and um, that should be fine I'll just screw that to the chassis but it'll remain isolated so I'll put that in and uh, we should be good to go and in she goes. I'm just checking this uh, tuning capacitor. Uh, it has been uh, making some noise as you tune through the stations and it's missing out on some. I can't see any shorts um, as I tune through on any of the gangs. So what I'll do is I'll check the, uh, the rotor to ground because that should be grounded through these little contacts down here so I'll try that just put the earth put the meter lead on here I think probably be okay and we've got ground there that's that's looking good and just rotate through oh okay that's not grounding through part of its travel See if there's there's a few movements of the needle there. One there, look. And there. Not anything there. Yeah, so I think that's our problem. But that, that's that's just not a thing there at all. So I'll have to find out what's causing that, but it should be easy enough to fix. Just probably a matter of cleaning the contacts with the little um, wipers. I've cleaned up the drive spindle and uh, got it running nicely. Well, now I guess I may as well do the dial string. And uh, I did save the string from uh, that I took off. It was broken, but I've taped it together. So I can cut one to the original length, which may be a help. It is quite long. It's, um, gee, that's one metre. It has to be nearly two metres. So I've taped both of them to the ruler at the other end, tied a loop in it, and I've tied the spring off at exactly the same spot on this end. So hopefully it'll be all right. OK, so this is open. That's open. 
This goes in here and attaches to oh, uh, the first one, I think, there. Yep. Okay. So it goes around there. Up over there. Okay. That seems to be about right in there and the spring hooks on but of course the spring has to go on first because you can't get it through the slot great all right we do it again at least it's not a phillips all right so i guess we start by threading the loop through here pull it through and hook on the spring round again through there through the hole doesn't matter through the hole and onto the first thing and the spring can go onto the second one all right now I just got to get it back onto the wheel shouldn't be too hard okay it's a bit loose needs tightening all right we can cope with that Unless it goes around the, the spindle twice, but uh, I think that would add, oh no, that would add about the right amount of length to it, wouldn't it? Okay, so now I've gone twice around the spindle. The spring is quite stretched, but it'll probably sort itself out as we go. That seems to be okay. got very little tension on it. It does slip a little bit at the end when it's open and a little bit at that end but not enough to worry about I don't think. Okay I'll call that strung. Okay one of the last things to do um, I do have a couple of resistors to change but I have to go and buy them first so uh, that'll have to wait till tomorrow. Um, is to clean this uh, multi-gang switch there's quite a lot of it um, and it seems to be working okay I think um, but the other thing is there's this ball bearing which had fallen out and I think I can see where it goes it sits in this little hole here I think what I'm going to do is hold it in the end of my pliers like that and pull the spring back with the screwdriver all right that didn't work so I'm going to try these these uh, surgical forceps they're good for a lot of things and see if I can poke it down with them now that will stay clamped in there if it lets go it'll let go with a ping and the ball bearing will disappear across the workshop let's just see if I can do this 
Aha, it's in. Okay, I'll just spray spray it all with um, electrical lube and see if that makes any difference to it. And work it backwards and forwards. Now this ring rear gang here is obviously the one that switches in all these um, various coils for the different wave bands. I guess that they're um, different aerial coils, I don't know. Well they could be oscillator coils but there's one, two, three, there's six other coils here. I think they're the oscillator and I think these are the aerial coils. Alright, well that should do it. Okay, I put the chassis aside for the moment and I thought I'd have a look at this speaker. And I can't remember where I've seen a speaker in nicer condition for its age. Uh, the only thing is it does scrape. Not terribly badly and if you hold it just right it doesn't. I'm hoping that that's just dirt that's got through this uh, felt pad here in the centre and uh, got into the, uh, the voice coil between the magnet and the inside of the coil because I can clean that out fairly easily. We'll see how I go with it anyway. This seem to be lifting off there, that's good. <laughs> I'll be able to reuse this. There we go. That is quite a big diameter voice coil. And it does seem to be rubbing in there. I'll see if I can get something down there to clean it out, but it'll have to be something very thin. There's a bit tight there. Here's another idea. I don't know if this is going to work. Looks right. Let's see how that is. Beautiful. Not the slightest sign of scraping. do seem to be getting reception on short wave on um, most of the bands is picking up something it's a bit early in the day for it yet uh, I might try again later on this evening and see what we pick up but uh, it does seem to be trying to pick up stations on all the short wave bands we'll just see how it goes later on Yeah, so that sounds like Manila. Um, and as I said, it is quite early for shortwave reception. But, um, it seems to be working pretty well. I'll run through all the bands later and see what we get. I just had the radio playing and I moved the speaker and uh, got some loud crackling noises and I jiggled this speaker cord again and it happened again. Um, quite violent crackling noises so I've had a look at the plug and uh, this wire has come loose in it 
Now there seems to be no way to open this plug apart from drilling out this rivet in the centre. Okay, so that's come off and uh, yeah, it looks as if this one here has come adrift. So I should be able to solder that back on and somehow pop this uh, top back on it. Well, I managed to solder that back in and I uh, took one of the other wires out that was looking a bit dodgy and soldered that in, put a bit of heat shrink on it. Hopefully that'll be alright. Now, to reattach the back of this plug, uh, I think if I just put this little screw in the middle here, that should do the trick. The, uh, the plug on the speaker, the centre of it, recessed, so I think um, the screw sticking out won't make any difference, it'll be fine. Yeah, that should be alright. Plug it in and see if it goes bang. Alright, let's try it out. I really appreciate your time tonight, Matt. Uh, thanks for highlighting this area. It's something that um, often gets neglected. Well that's on AM, let's just see what we get on short wave, it's later at night now, so we might get something. This has seven bands in all, so, well it's six I think. Try the next band. humanitarian supplies including tents and blankets to the front lines of the disaster relief effort in Pakistan. China's announced an emergency response for floods in Sichuan and Chongqing. Forecasters say rainy days will persist in the region for the next 10 days. Okay well with the radio working reasonably well now I thought I'd uh, attempt uh, an IF alignment at least and I'll probably do an RF alignment on the uh, medium wave section. I don't know if I'll go so far as to doing RF alignments on all the uh, shortwave bands. We'll see. I might try one and see how close it is. So we're ready to go now. I've got the signal generator set up for 455 kilohertz. And the frequency counter is confirming that it's uh, on 455. That's pretty close, I would say. 455.05. You don't get much... Oh, 0, 0.00. You don't get much better than that. I've got the uh, signal generator output fed into the the grid of the 6J8 here and uh, when I turn the radio on we should hear the tone. But uh, I'm not going to video the whole thing because I can't do a, um, a dummy load for the field coil speaker uh, without cutting some connections in it. So I'll just have to put up with the noise, but that doesn't mean you should have to. So I'll, uh, I'll video it, but I'll uh, just do a commentary over it, I think might be the easiest way. So I'm just setting a reference point here. And this is the uh, second IF, which it says to do first. I don't think I'm going to get very much out of this. 
hardly worthwhile that one just about nothing out of it. Next is the bottom of the same coil, the bottom of the second IF and these adjustment screws are very stiff cause me no end of trouble but that one's coming up a satisfying amount I suppose not huge, it wasn't that far out but at least I got something out of it now the first IF, the top adjustment and I had to uh, loosen it with a screwdriver before I could move it it was uh, very stiff and after all that trouble I only got a tiny little bit of an improvement out of it and finally the bottom of the first IF and here we are and again I didn't get a lot out of that one but I guess I've, overall it was uh, a slight improvement, probably worthwhile. I was just tuning through the short wave band and um, got some reception. Which is unusual because it's only around midday, you don't normally get very much during the day. I don't know what that is, but there's uh, there's a Chinese English language broadcast that I've been hearing quite a bit, and that might be it. Well, I don't know what that is, but uh, I might just leave it tuned to that and just see if they uh, identify the station. The chassis hasn't turned out too badly. Um, perhaps the best you can say about it is that it's clean, at least. Uh, it uh, is pretty patchy looking but it's um, acceptable I guess I don't want to go overboard with it uh, I'm not sure what I could do to make it any better anyway this is the other side of it and I did um, find a, uh, a 5Y3G to put in in place of that uh, metal rectifier tube the one that was in it turned out to be an RCA 5Z4 so I don't know where that originated from. It obviously worked well in it. So I'll keep that and I'll, uh, I'll put the 5Y3G back in. Well, it all seems to be working very well uh, at the moment. So this seems to be a good place to leave this video before anything else goes wrong. The next part of it is going to be the, the cabinet and there's quite a bit to do there. But uh, with the weather improving, it's the beginning of spring, uh, I shouldn't have any problems uh, working outside, which I prefer to do with cabinet work. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, consider subscribing to the channel. It's uh, just on a year since I did my first YouTube video and the channel's been growing slowly since then. It seems within the realms of possibility now that I might uh, get to a thousand subscribers within the next month or two. So. Uh, hopefully I'll catch you in the shed next time when we'll attack the cabinet. Catch you then.